Okay, uh, it's 10 o'clock. I think we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is David Castor. I'm an electrical engineer at uh, Easy Power. And in this 30-minute uh, webinar today, we're going to just kind of go through some of the capabilities and features of the smart PDC option in Easy Power, which is the uh, auto coordination capability. Um, so if you're not familiar with this, uh, this will kind of give you an overview of, of what it does and how it integrates in with the, the Easy Power model and protective device coordination. So I'm going to start with just this sample file. This is actually the tutorial that we provide for um, the auto coordination or smart PDC. Um, so primarily the smart PDC is going to help us uh, come up with settings, protected device settings for adjustable devices. Um, so things like low voltage power circuit breakers that have adjustable trip units. It can look at the system protection requirements and coordination requirements and come up with uh, recommended settings for that that you can then uh, modify or change as you need to. It will also um, help with uh, checking all the protection requirements. And so it gives you a good starting point <clears throat> excuse me, for um, your settings. And it produces a report giving you um, some background of rationale for why it made the settings changes that it did. And um, it'll get some warnings and sometimes some error messages if it's not able to coordinate things in the way that it thinks it should. So to use the protected device or the auto coordination smart PDC, we need to be in coordination. So we're going to go into coordination focus up here from the database. And so the simplest way to do this is we'll go ahead and create um, the time current curve for the devices we want to run auto coordination on, and then we'll run that function and see what changes and we'll look at the report that it generates. So generally I would recommend that if you're, if you're using Smart PDC that you start from the bottom of your system and kind of work your way up in segments and pieces. That's kind of the way we would do it if we were doing coordination by hand and it works just as well for uh, Smart PDC. It will attempt to coordinate as many devices as you select but it gets very hard to figure out what's going on on the, P on the time current curve because there's so many devices on there. So I would recommend that you start at the bottom of your system and work your way up. As you get more comfortable with it, you can maybe uh, take bigger and bigger chunks out of the system. What I'm going to do is we're going to start over here. We're going to just look at this substation here. And um, we're going to start with this feeder. And we're going to do uh, coordination from the MCC up through this feeder breaker here. Now in the MCC, let me go back to database just for a second here. In Easy Power, we can have devices inside the MCC that we can coordinate. So if I double click on this and go to the description tab, we have four loads defined in the MCC. And row one, we have a motor that's defined under the load type as motor with TCC. So any motor, that, motor that's defined in the MCC schedule as motor with TCC, I'm going to see that motor's starting curve and its protective device curve if that is defined in the MCC schedule. So if I go over to the motor specifications, you can see that this is a 200 horsepower motor and it has a Moly case circuit breaker protecting it. All right, so if I go back to coordination, and if I look at, I'm going to just, just like if I'm just going to create a time current curve as I normally would. So I'm just going to hold down my shift key, <clears throat> highlight the devices that I want to see. So I'm just going to look at this one feeder in the MCC. So when I create my, I go up here to plot to create the time current curve for those devices. And I see basically this 200 horsepower motor inside the MCC. This is the starting curve for that. And 
me just drag some of this text around to make it a little bit easier to see. This blue time current curve is the molded case circuit breaker that's protecting the motor. And then this purple curve here is this feeder breaker, BL2B. And so those, those are the devices that were in this part of the one line that I selected. So if you're not familiar with uh, protected device coordination and easy power, you get a one line over here, and that same one line shows up. Over. This shows you the part of the system that you have in your, in your TCC. So now to run the auto coordinate, I'm just going to go up here under smart PDC. And there, there's some options here we'll come back to and look at it in a minute. But basically, if I just click on the main button here, it's going to run uh, the auto coordinate routine. It's going to change the settings as it thinks it needs to change. So you saw the curves move when I clicked on the smart PDC. And so now um, it moved. Basically, the obvious thing is it, it moved the instantaneous trip for this moldy case breaker up to allow the motor to start and it also adjusted the setting here for this feeder breaker. So if you want to understand why it made those changes and the rationale, if you go up to the window button here, there's going to be a report that's generated. This says auto coordination phase report. If I look at this, it's going to provide some information on why it made the settings choices that it made. And so it's going to start in the MCC here with that um, 200 horsepower motor. See, we have a, <clears throat> a warning regarding the service factor. We have an instantaneous trip setting adjustment. So the old setting was 1,200 amps. The auto coordinates recommending a setting of 2,800 amps. Uh, so that's the change that you saw on the TCC. Then it moves up to the feeder breaker in the switch switch gear. It's a low voltage power circuit breaker or GE Microversa Trip 9. It checks the cable rating to make sure the cable is adequately protected. And then it looks at the downstream device that it needs to coordinate with. So based on that criteria, it comes up with your settings, long time pickup, long time delay band, short time pickup, short time delay band, and instantaneous, which is none. So and then it gives you the reasoning why it picked the settings that it picked. So this was produced for all the devices that it sets. So this is what we call the auto coordination report. Now this report can be exported to either Word or Excel if you want to preserve this or edit it for some reason. So these are the settings that the program is proposing. Now, you'll note that when I did this, the settings were actually changed. And uh, you saw the curves move. Um, so we still have the option of when we go back to database, we can tell EasyPower either to save these changes or to abandon these changes. So um, if we want to get rid of those, if we don't like what protected device coordination did, we auto coordination did, we can get rid of those changes just by not saving them when we go back to database. So you always have a way out if it does something that doesn't seem right or you want to go back to what you had before. There's also an option here under Smart PDC to just generate the report without changing any settings. Okay, so let's go back now and take a look at the rest of the feeders in that MCC or that switchboard. So I'm not going to save this TCC. The settings do get stored. Now let's take the next feeder, which is basically another motor, and we'll do the same, run through the same process. So here I have a, my motor starting curve and my low voltage power circuit breaker here, which in this case is a microburst strip 9 trip unit. So now when I run Smart PDC, it's going to, the only adjustable device here is going to be this breaker. So it's going to adjust that based on motor protection rules and, and uh, other coordination issues. So when I click the Smart PDC button, you can see it, it changed the setting to look 
like it's doing a better job of protecting the motor. And again, I would have a report that's generated. Gives me the data for the motor. Full load amps, locked rotor amps. And down here it comes up with the settings, recommended settings for that low voltage power circuit breaker and the rationale. So it it computes the uh, locked rotor current and then figures the inrush or asymmetrical current and makes sure it sets the instantaneous trip above that value so the motor will start without tripping, which is generally a good idea. Okay, so that takes care of that feeder. Now we can march on through the last feeder, which is going to be similar to the uh, one we just did. So if I do a plot here, again, these, these are the settings. Now one of the things in Easy Power is that you, you need to put some initial settings in to have some, something to start from, so it can generate the time current curve. So even if you don't know what the settings should be, you can just pick some settings, make some guesses, and then make adjustments later, either manually or using auto coordination. Okay, so I'm going to go back and run the smart PDC again. And now you can see it's thought about it for a little bit and come up <clears throat> with these settings. So we can see the multi case breaker here has been adjusted to uh, better match the motor starting curve. And then it's adjusted this feeder breaker to coordinate with the multi case breaker that's protecting the motor. So, and again, if we went back, we would have a coordination report that's going to summarize what it did and uh, the recommend old settings and new settings. Okay, so now we've set all the feeders. We'll take a look at doing the main breaker. And so if we, I'm just going to highlight the entire switchboard. I get all the feeders and the main. So now if I come back to plot, I'm going to get something that looks like this. So I have my three feeders. Uh, you got to keep in mind that these three feeders do not need to coordinate with each other, uh, but they do need to coordinate with the main up here. So again, I follow the same process in that I click on the smart PDC, and then the program basically goes through the same process. These didn't change because we'd already run auto coordinate on these. But it did adjust the main breaker curve here, the settings for the main breaker. So if I go in again, I'm going to have a report under phase report here. So BL2A is the main. So here's my transformer. It figures out the full load amps of this transformer. It knows that whether it has to meet unsupervised. <coughs> versus unsupervised, that's a setting in the transformer data. This uh, ref references the NEC requirements for transformer protection, so we allow you to make that choice. And then the program will calculate the <clears throat> maximum allowable setting based on the NEC transformer protection requirements from Article 450. So based on that, it comes up with the recommended settings. And again, we have some some warnings here of things that was not able to exactly set the way it wanted to, but you can refer to that. So basically it's going to give you a, and it, it went through the other breakers as well, but we'd already set those, so we're basically generating the same information we saw previously. So if I do, let me generate that report again, sorry, I went to look at something here. So if I rerun that, the curves don't change because it's going to come up with the same answer that it came up with last time. But um, if I look at the main breaker settings, it's it's looking at the switchgear 2A bus. And I get a warning here. It says no, no rating specified. And that's referring to the continuous current rating for the bus. And if we had specified that in the bus data, then it would take that into account as well when it did the main breaker settings to make sure the bus was adequately protected. 
Okay. And we'll we'll come back and take a look a quick look at that in a minute. So we can kind of see basically what's going on with the smart PDC. Let's take a look at some of the options here to see how it's making these decisions. Basically, we, it's kind of a rule-based <clears throat> rule system. And so in the coordination options, we have auto coordination. Um, so we have some rules about what to do with devices if there's no data or if we have insufficient data, how to set the breakers. Um, it will also allow us to do phase, phase and ground or both, or ground only or phase and ground. And there's also options for the, including the tr transform phase shift for the delta Y transformers. Also, um, this is the option that below there, <coughs> excuse me, says generate report without changing the database. So that would generate that report we looked at, but it wouldn't actually change any of the settings. So if you're kind of getting your feet wet, you might want to uh, approach it that way. So if we go down and look at some of the other devices, we have uh, transform settings or coordination related to transformers. Here's the table from the NEC for supervised versus unsupervised. These are the maximum settings that are allowed. So the, that we'll take these into account. Um, you can use max transformer amps here or the self-cooled rating. Uh, so let's go to the line options. And so one, the basic option here is whether you're going to use the long time pickup to protect the breaker or you're going to use the, the minimum tolerance, which could be slightly higher. Also, if you're familiar with the what we, you know, we typically call in the NEC the next larger size rule, it's going to allow you to upsize the uh, breaker or the setting for the next larger size above the conductor ampacity except when it's over 800 amps. And again, if we keep going, we have basically instructions on how to set the long time pickup, short time pickup, some guidelines that you, you can tweak here. Under motor protection, we have some tolerances. We can tell it to follow. For the relays, again, we have defaults here. Safety margins, we can tweak those can tell it whether or not to ignore the fuses on a transformer primary if you're coordinating a relay upstream and uh, how to set the instantaneous setting. And we also have, these are the safety margins that you can set be coordinating between devices. So you can adjust this as well. So those are some places where you can kind of tweak the rules that it's using as, as it does the settings. So I'm going to close this. Now, when I go back, so we've done all this in coordination, and it's, it's made these changes, but these are temporary changes because I'm, I'm still in coordination. When I go back to database, it's going to ask me if I want to save these changes. So at this point, if you've been playing around with auto-coordinate, you didn't really like what it did, or you just don't want to save those changes, if you say, no here, then it's going to revert back to whatever settings are in the database before you went into coordination. If you say yes, it's then going to save all those changes that auto coordination made to the database and those will become your actual settings. So in this case I'm going to say no just so we can go back and have a fresh start here. Now we looked at, we had that option for the had that warning that we did not have a bus rating set. So just to double show you where that is, if I double click on the bus, here is the bus rating in amps, and that's blank. You're not required to put anything in here. But if you do, the program will use this for a few things, particularly um, for auto design and auto coordination. So if I put, let's say I put 3,000 amps in here, which is going to be small, I think. Then if I go back now to coordination, 
if I redo what we did before, it's going to adjust the settings, but now I get similar settings, but when I go back to my report, it's going to take the uh, bus rating into account when it gets to that BL2A. So you can see now for the main breaker, which is BL2A, switchgear bus rating 3000 amps. So it's going to make sure that that bus is protected by whatever settings it, it suggests here. So it, old setting was 1.1, which is 35 20 amps, it's going to set it down to 0 0.9, 2880 to get below the 3000 amps that I just put in. So that's going to, that bus rating does affect the settings that it uses. Okay, so that's the basics of um, how auto coordinate works. Um, it will work, it's, it's best used for adjustable devices. If you have a fuse, it's not going to change the fuse size. It will tell you if the fuse is too big or too small, but then you would have to go back in and manually change the fuse size. Um, so just be aware that the big, the big advantage comes with the adjustable devices. All right, so one last thing. Uh, I was actually working on a project yesterday where we're replacing some old electromechanical relays with a some new digital relays to mainly for arc, arc flash reduction and um, to add a maintenance mode setting. So I, I realized then that I could save myself a little bit of time and by using the smart PDC. So I just wanted to show you that real quick and let me uh, bring this file up. So in this case, I've got this relay here, which had been a uh, like an IAC electromechanical relay. This this feeder here, this tap, actually feeds three different substations, 3A, 3B, and 3C. And so in order to set the protective characteristics of this relay, the pickup, I need to look at the full load amps, the total full load amps of all three motors or substations. I also need to worry about the total inrush if I energize all three of these at the same time. And also the downstream devices here. In this case, there are no mains, but it's going to look at the feeders and make sure that whatever setting we put in here is going to coordinate with the feeders. So just to kind of show you how that would work for this relay, um, I go to coordinate, coordination focus, and I'm just going to Look at my feeder. I'm go down through the transformer <clears throat> so we can see this on the one line. So we'll go ahead and look at all three of these. All right, so if I go to plot then, I get this uh, time current curve here. And you can see my relay is, I have some preliminary settings in there. These are a kind of I have three fuses, identical fuses, and two identical transformers, and one's a slightly different size. And so that's why there are some text on top of each other. So let me, um, first thing I want to do is make this relay curve a little bit bigger so we can see it. Okay, so here's my relay curve. These are the preliminary settings that I just plugged in there. So if I now go to Smart PDC and run the auto coordinate, it's going to evaluate this, what the settings should be and then propose this. So you can see it changed the settings. Now, where you have a digital relay, I have a choice of curves, very inverse, extremely inverse. Um, Etc. It's not going to change the curve shape from what you selected. It will adjust the tap and the time dial and the instantaneous, but uh, it's not going to change the very inverse to extremely inverse. That would have to be done uh, manually. All right, so the interesting thing here maybe is to look at the report that's generated. So these are all the things 
downstream of this that the program looked at to coordinate this release. So we have the cables, has to be protected. Uh, now you see here it says transformer fuses were ignored. That's actually an option in auto coordinate. So you can either have it ignore the transformer primary fuses or include those in the protection scheme. I have my three transformers, my maximum, and these are defined as supervised. I have my transformer full load amps. I have my downstream feeders. It's going to look at all those curves and make sure those are coordinated. And then eventually it comes up with the settings. It gives me a mac, a minimum and a max here for the pickup, the tap setting. And the old was 180. It's going to increase it to 240. If if you take the total KVA, the max, the force cooled rating of all those transformers, the maximum, and add them up, you come up with 238 amps. So that's why that's the minimum, because it wants to be able to carry the full load amps of all three transformers. This maximum setting is based on the NEC rules for transformer protection. So. This is the range. It's going to start at the minimum, but it's telling you you could increase it and still be uh, to meet the code requirements. And again, the instantaneous trip was changed to reflect the total, the approximate total inrush, cumulative inrush. It just takes the sum of the three transformers if they're all energized at the same time. So that gives me a good starting point for my settings and. Uh, Obviously, this is not a replacement for you know an engineer to go back in and make the final adjustments and and look at arc flash and those kind of things. But it does do a good job of checking the protection requirements and providing some initial settings that would allow you to uh, go forward from there and kind of improve the settings. So, just a quick overview of Smart PDC. Um, there was a question about a Smart PDC available in the previous versions or just the latest one. It is available in 9.5 and probably 9.0 something, whatever the last one was before that. And of course in 9.6 was just came out. So it is available in uh, the last two or three versions. Um, question about the uh, inrush what inrush is used. That's actually a setting. So let's go back and look at transformer data. So for every transformer, I have a TCC tab. So this is where I tell EasyPower if this is a supervised or unsupervised location. And the magnetizing inrush, the default is eight times full load amps for six cycles, or that's a tenth of a second at 60 hertz. Um, so if, if you want to use a different value here, you would need to make that change in this box for this particular transformer. Also here we set the full load amps. Uh, is it going to be based on the this O slash L, which is really the force cooled rating for the transformer and uh, or the just the self cooled rating. So that's where the inrush is set. Uh, question about arc flash. Uh, at this point in time, the smart PDC does not take arc flash into consideration. It looks at the protective device requirements, protection requirements for the rules you've defined, and also the coordination between the upstream and downstream devices. So I would the normal workflow, I think, would be to run the initial coordination settings, go back and look at your arc flash, and then adjust your settings as, as required maybe to reduce arc flash. One thing I should point out is for for all devices we have a ability to lock the auto coordination. So if I check this box, once I get the settings the way I want it, if I check this box and when I run auto coordination again the program will not make any changes to these settings. So I I can do that as a group as well. So if, if I have a group of devices under my smart PDC, I can I can lock all those. So once I get a substation or whatever group of devices set 
the way that I want them. I can lock those. So then if somebody accidentally hits auto coordination, those, those settings will not change. So just be aware that for anything that's adjustable, we have that checkbox to lock the auto coordination settings. Just one more question. Um, if the breakers are not selected properly and cannot avoid overlapping the curves, you will get a warning or an error message if it can't coordinate. It's not going to change the device. The only thing it will do is adjust the settings. And uh, if it gets beyond what it can fix with a settings change, it'll just generate a warning or an error message if it, if it can't coordinate, if or it's, something's not adequately protected. Um, Emergency generator uh, should take that into account as far as different short circuit currents. Um, it's going to depend on which position your transfer switch is in or which, which mode you're operating in when you run the auto coordinate. So um, you'll have to decide how you're going to set it. Uh, but it, it should take that into account if you run the auto coordinate with the, in the proper position of your transfer switch, then it, it will use that, that short circuit current for its coordination check. Okay, so we're a little past our time, but um, I appreciate uh, you guys sitting in on the webinar. If you have additional questions, you can uh, email me at uh, david at easypower.com. Uh, but otherwise, uh, tune in again uh, soon, and there'll be another webinar on a hopefully a topic related to Easy Power that will be of interest to you. So thanks for sitting in, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks.